Today, I will be talking about iterative linear quadratic regulator for piecewise smooth hybrid dynamical systems. To motivate this work, there's a persistent issue with legged robots. They're currently not reliable enough to be fully utilized in autonomous situations. They're less reliable partially due to the discontinuous nature of impacts that are made during locomotion. In this example, one small slip leads to a drastically different outcome than planned. In the case of wheeled robots or other systems with smooth dynamics, these small perturbations lead to small differences in outcomes. To increase the reliability of legged robots, they must be able to plan through contacts and to also be able to efficiently replan in real time if something goes wrong. A common strategy for real-time planning is to use Iterative Linear Quadratic Regulator, or ILQR for short. ILQR has been widely successful for creating dynamic behaviors for continuous systems such as drones, but does not directly map to systems with discontinuous jumps like our legged robots. ILQR works by first starting with an initial guess for the inputs. Oftentimes, zero input is chosen. So this UK would be zero for each time step K. This initial guess is simulated forward using the system's dynamics. A quadratic cost is evaluated based on how much input is used and how much tracking error there is. On a backwards pass, um, we linearize the trajectory at each time step and create a local control policy which contains a feedback and feed forward term. This new policy is implemented on the forwards pass where again the system dynamics are simulated. This cycle of backwards and forwards pass is repeated until convergence. To further illustrate the algorithm, I show an example trajectory generation for a pendulum swing up. This animation shows the different components of IOQR in state space. The rollout is shown in black. The backwards pass computes the direction of improvement and creates a new control policy. And the forwards pass uses the new policy to improve. Again, the cycle is repeated until convergence. So how does this change when we have a hybrid dynamical system? The general problem setup is the same where we have some start state and a desired goal state. We still want to find the states and inputs that minimizes some costs. However, now the dynamics can change along the trajectory. In this case, the jumping robot has drastically different dynamics while it's in the air than on the ground. And there can be sudden jumps in the trajectory, such as when the robot's toe hits the ground, the toe velocity instantaneously goes to zero. Standard ILQR, as well as other standard trajectory optimization algorithms, cannot handle hybrid systems due to the differing modes, as well as the discrete jumps. Before I talk about how we can extend ILQR to hybrid systems, I will first give some background on hybrid systems. Informally, a, a hybrid system consists of two or more hybrid modes. In this example, I chose I to be the current mode and J to be the next hybrid mode. Each hybrid mode has its own domain, dynamics on the domain, and hybrid transitions are triggered by hitting a guard surface and transitions to the next hybrid domain through a reset map. Here's an example of a hybrid execution where a particle starts in hybrid mode I, flows with dynamics on FI, hits the guard, resets, and flows with a new dynamics. An important question to ask is what happens to neighboring particles that are delta X away? In this case, suppose T minus is the pre-transition time and T plus will later see on is the post-transition time. Again, we flow with the old dynamics, hit the guard, reset, and flow with the new dynamics. But is there a way that we can formalize what delta T plus should be given delta T minus? This is what the saltation matrix captures. Ultimately, the saltation matrix is the update for the sensitivity equation during a hybrid transition. So what makes up a saltation matrix? It is the Jacobian of the reset map plus an outer product term that captures the variations in the differing dynamics and in the guard. It is important to note that sometimes the Jacobian of the reset map is used instead of the saltation matrix, but this is generally incorrect. Even though the outer product term only consists of one rank, this difference can be large. So how do we implement ILQR for systems with hybrid dynamics? Well, we make several hybrid modifications. First, the hybrid dynamics need to be simulated. The backwards pass needs to be updated to reflect the changes from simulating the hybrid dynamics. 
and mode mismatches must be handled correctly when we apply the new control policy. When simulating the hybrid dynamics, if the guard is hit in the current domain, then we must apply the reset map and then simulate for the dynamics in the new domain. We label this integral here with the lowercase f, and this is a discrete update from the dynamics in the old mode. On the backwards pass, as an approximation, we linearize only about one of the hybrid dynamics during an impact. This approximation is arbitrary, but leads to a piecewise smooth control law, which helps with convergence. And then we use the saltation matrix to update the linearization about the hybrid event. Lastly, since the hybrid transition can move around due to simulating a new control law each iteration, an issue may occur when the current hybrid mode does not match the reference. This issue can be locally patched by extending the references to ensure there's a reference for the correct mode. And for the input, we can just hold the input and gains constant during this time. By applying these modifications to ILQR, we extend it to work for hybrid systems. In this example, we have a bouncing ball with thrusters on it in the vertical direction. The ball wants to get to this dashed line and ending with zero velocity. For this first example, we show our hybrid ILQR algorithm, but this one uses the Jacobian of the reset map instead of the saltation matrix to demonstrate what can go wrong. We see the gradient information here wants to take away the contact rather than utilize it. In this case, it's actually more optimal to keep the bounce because a lot of energy is lost by keeping the ball afloat. Note that once this impact is taken away, this just becomes traditional smooth ILQR. Whereas when we use the saltation matrix, the gradient information is correct, pushing down before contact and up afterwards, and is able to actually find the optimal solution now. This iteration, uh, this answer matches the one produced uh, through hybrid collocation. In this example, we have the same problem set up, but we give the optimizer a bad seed of three bounces when it only needs one. However, the algorithm is still able to find the same optimal one bounce trajectory as we previously saw. Overall, these examples demonstrate the algorithm's ability to move and remove context to produce optimal trajectories. Again, this is the bouncing ball example that I showed previously. However, we also show a variety of solves for different systems where we compare the Jacobian the reset map versus using the saltation matrix. For all these examples, the Jacobian the reset map variant never converged and produced trajectories with significantly higher costs. In the example on the right, a quad rotor is tasked to perch at this go location over here marked with the pink plus sign. Uh, and we can make contact with this curved surface. When using the Jacobi and the reset map, uh, we see the end of the trajectory is marked with this red circle. It does not converge. Whereas using the saltation matrix with this teal circle, we are able to converge to an optimal solution. Lastly, we are able to use hybrid ILQR to produce a long jump for a full order planar monoped robot. These results are really cool because the algorithm is actually able to move around the context state and timing, which is something we couldn't do before with standard ILQR. In this work, we extended ILQR to hybrid dynamical systems through three main hybrid modifications. We simulate the hybrid dynamics on the forward passes, use the correct linearization about the hybrid events on the backwards pass, and handle mode mismatches in the controller. The strengths of this algorithm are that it is able to efficiently plan out a hybrid trajectory due to linearizations. It is contact implicit, so it can move, add, or remove contacts if it will improve the cost. It always returns a feasible trajectory because it is a shooting method. And we also provide stabilizing gains about these hybrid trajectories, which is pretty unique. The drawback from this algorithm is that when you encode the hybrid dynamic constraints through simulation on the forward pass, it becomes very dependent on its initial seed. Uh, it may not know to add contact if there is no gradient information. 
However, this is similar to other shooting methods where they are also dependent on the initial seed. Thank you for listening to my talk.